Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today is a special video showing you a landscape sketch on location at West Ham Island in Delta in the greater Vancouver area. Here we're driving over the bridge. Oh, here's a little pigeon. And yeah, there's a really old fashioned bridge and it looks like there's a village on the island here, very old fashioned. Everything is like the old way. Mountains and snow caps in the northern part of Vancouver. And we're driving past by a farm. I spot some cows. So we're planning to visit this uh, migratory bird sanctuary, but then we found out that we had to book a reservation before coming here. Okay, so I guess we'll come back next time. So we drove back to the farm with cows and spent some time looking at these cows. But it was so windy and past lunchtime that day, I was so hungry, so I didn't stay on and um, uh, sketch the cows. But I came back two days later. The weather was still sunny, but it was not that windy anymore. So I want to spend like an hour to sketch the farm with the cows before teaching my afternoon art class. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna begin drawing the largest object in this scenery, the barn. So I started drawing the simple geometric shape of the rooftop and then the body part, adding these parallel lines for the uh, wooden planks of the roof. And then adding another solid line for accentuation around the eave area. Now I'm adding the little doors there on the side, starting to draw. Uh, now I am drawing uh, the wooden fence on the left side of the barn. And then begin drawing the trees around and behind the barn house. When I'm drawing trees, I like to start uh, drawing the tree trunk area and then connecting those branches and twigs emerging from the tree trunk. Okay, so now I am slowing this video back to normal real-time drawing speed so you can see how I draw each tree. All right, so I'm keep seeing and then summarizing these twigs that I see emerging from the major branches. So I'm pressing my pen on the paper very lightly to create these organic uh, lines of the twigs trying to capture the energy and not just trying to get every single twig that's out there. So these are just skeletons of like two trees um, wrapping around a spherical three dimension of two canopies. So I think I have two or three trees here overlapping each other. And um, I shaded some of the trunk areas with solid black ink. So these trees could stand up better and not just getting lost in a huge jumble of lines. Yeah, and keep adding some more branches of shorter trees behind the barn house and making the outline of the roof a little thicker so the barn house stand out even better. Now I'm ready to draw a white cow coming over to the middle ground grazing on the grass here and um, today most of the cows are actually uh, very lazy laying down right by the barn house in the far distance and not really coming over to the fence here and only a couple of the cows um, came to the middle ground to graze on the grass yeah so i just added some hatching lines around the belly and the leg area to suggest the muscles uh, the thigh area connecting to the body. I'm trying my best. It's actually really hard to see the details of the cows here in the middle ground. Now I'm starting to add more brackets back there close to the barn house. And one of the cows laying down, taking a nap, just being lazy. They're not standing up and coming over to say hi today. 
And now I am going back to drawing the trees behind the barn. Yeah, just quickly summarizing、uh, the spirit of these trees with very quick and loose lines, and also gentle pressure for the twigs. For the tree trunks and the major branches, I like to make the lines thicker with、uh, multiple、uh, rubbings with my pen in that area. A lot of these lines are actually very feathery. For the twigs now, I'm actually drawing the outline of the evergreen tree here, in a cone shape, and more deciduous trees behind. Now I'm drawing this pile of grains right over here outside the barn, and another little lazy cow laying down there. More fences, and this is another little barn house. And accentuate the door frames and the little windows,、uh, the overall frame of this barn house. I added accentuation as well, starting to draw、um, the outline and the texture of the evergreen trees here on the right hand side. Add a couple more shorter deciduous trees around. Now I'm going back to the main barn house for some more exterior textures, very quick and loose vertical lines to suggest the wooden planks, and making those side doors more clear. Starting to draw more cows in different gestures for shortened views. Yeah, so their bodies are pretty broad and the heads are not too big. With the ears and the hoofs, adding a bit of quick hatching to suggest some muscles, especially around the thigh areas. Another head and the big body. This one is a younger cow. And finishing up the fence behind. It's my first time sketching cows. And to be honest, the drawing process was very uncertain for me.、Um, a lot of insecure thoughts was running through my head,、uh, worrying about not getting these cows to look right. Well, and I'm a human as well, and it's always scary to try new things, such as the trying a new subject matter to draw and paint. And just finished drawing this last cow here in the middle ground, adding a bit of accentuation, also hatching to suggest muscles around the legs. All right, just adding some final accentuations for the fences back there. Now I am drawing the foreground elements, which are the、uh, the bushes. Close to the fence here, the large blades of grass. So I am creating a sort of juxtaposition over here. So each cluster of grass is about the same size, or even larger than those cows in the middle ground and in the background, because things in the foreground, even as a small object, they could look larger than the、uh, gigantic things there in the background. Now I'm adding these shorter and smaller grass blades in the middle ground. So this is the way I create a sense of depth in a seemingly flat landscape: is to play around with the sizes of the same subject matter. For example,、uh, this grassland. And it was very important for me to wait for one or two cows to come to the middle ground, come closer to me,、um, to create a sense of depth. I don't want、uh, to sketch all of the cows sitting there in the back. Otherwise, this picture would lack interest and a sense of depth without the two cows、uh, grazing in the middle ground. Adding some、uh, accentuation for the grass blades in the foreground with denser lines and.、Um, Some looser lines there for the trees in the back. Bit of hatching for the side of the barn, and that's it for the drawing part. 
Now it's time to have fun with watercolors. I, I'm just wetting the sky area with clear water. Just make sure I have a really translucent wash. I'm also using a new tripod to film. If I'm using my goose neck tripod, it's going to be very shaky when filming uh, the sketchbook on my lap. It's a new tripod standing beside me. So now I'm laying some really quick and large brush strokes of cerulean blue and also allowing a slight bit of uh, layering to happen with two different tones of blue created with water control. Now, most of the time I'm just starting to drag uh, the blue pigment from the middle to the lower part of the sky. The bottom of the sky, I wanted to keep it really transparent and adding some stronger blue tones for the top until the middle part of the sky. Okay, so that's it for the sky now. Now I'm just wetting the grassland with clear water. Okay, so now I just grabbed yellow ochre, mix it with a little bit of cadmium yellow to get this golden tone for the first layer of the grassland. And again, this color is pretty translucent, diluted with quite a bit of water. For the first layers of painting everything, I very rarely use a solid uh, layer of paint. Now wet onto wet some burnt sienna and also a little bit of uh, orange as well, trying to make the color look more lightly than just one singular yellow there. Now I just switched back to my large tip Holbein water brush and I use a leftover orange yellow diluted a lot with water to create this foggy effect of uh, late winter, early spring trees. They don't have uh, new leaves yet, but I could feel that the leaves are sprouting. Yeah, so for some trees, I also mix in a tiny bit of leftover green into the yellow orange and just keep this tone super diluted. It should be a foggy effect, not a solid color. Now just letting uh, those tree canopy areas to dry a bit. Now I am mixing viridian green with um, yellow ochre to paint some evergreen trees peeking behind those deciduous trees in the distance. And same for the couple evergreen trees here on the right. So as you can see, when I'm painting the evergreen tree here, every single brush stroke contains a different amount of water. That's one of the advantages of using a water brush, is that you could be very uh, flexible and create lively brush strokes if you know how to control the water of a water brush. Now I'm adding the second layer. It's a mix of lime green with viridian green for the green grass. Also, I'm playing with water control here. So every long brush stroke is of a slightly different shade of the same green that I mix. And also I keep mixing uh, more or less viridian green into the lime green. And also leaving some areas of the first layer un untouched. So this is how we create a flow, a sense of flow in watercolors. You have to do, you have to paint in layers be aware of the colors that you need to use for each layer. Now I'm adding a darker tone of green for the bottom of the barn there with just pure viridian green. That area is more shaded. And also depending on the lighting condition and the growth of grass, uh, in certain areas, some grass blades could look of a deeper green compared to other areas. So now I'm using very choppy brush strokes to suggest the uh, rough texture of the grass blades in the, uh, in the background and the middle ground area. A re actually a really fuzzy effect. You don't have to be very specific. You don't have to create solid brush strokes of grass blades for grass in the, uh, in the distance. And for the foreground, it's very easy because I already outlined the grass blades with, uh, with pen. And so I can just color in very quickly not worrying about fitting my brush strokes inside the outlines. Just keep my brush strokes really loose. And keep adding some more subtle tones of greens that are pretty much invisible, but I really enjoy you know, having tiny bits of colors. 
Now I just grab a bit of leftover yellow orange to paint the first layer of uh, the barn's exterior. I just grab some fresh green for the roof of the barn house. Yeah, I think now the barn is looking much more attractive with the red roof and using the leftover yellow orange for the little barn there on the side. Grabbing a little cobalt blue, mix it with uh, purple and use a very thin line to paint the cast shadow of the roof right there. And same for this side. This side is all shaded because the sun is on the left. And same for this roof of the little barn. And just adding a slightly more concentrated yellow orange for that piece of the exterior of the main barn. And this pile of, of grains. Now I'm starting to add more definition for the foggy areas of the tree canopies by using leftover burnt sienna. Still a diluted version of burnt sienna. And keep adding some more touches of diluted yellow orange or yellow brown. Playing with the amount of uh, burnt sienna and orange yellow. As you can see, I am scraping my mixing palette area with my brush. I'm actually using a lot of the leftover colors because if I just grab it, you know, mostly from the cakes, the color will look too concentrated. So most of the time, I'm actually uh, using the leftover colors and just grabbing the orange a little bit once in a while and putting on some fresh lime green on the bottom because I see some trees sprouting there. Another layer of more dense green with viridian green mixed with uh, burnt sienna. Adding another layer of shadow underneath the roof here, the side of the main barn. And uh, keep grabbing some leftover browns and greens. And some burnt sienna to paint the little tree branches. Yeah, so these trees are really nice supporting elements for this barn scenery. So the warm colors of these trees are very nice contrasting colors with the, uh, the colder greens on the bottom of the sketch. So the painting process is actually pretty slow and impressionistic. Yeah, and for certain areas, we do need accentuation with a less diluted tone. Okay, I think that's it for the trees behind. Now it's time to paint the cows. This one is a brown one. So I just use burnt sienna with a little bit of raw umber for the bottom part of, of her body. And for the rest of the cows, most of them are black ones and this one is actually white but very muddy on on the hoofs and the belly so i just use the leftover brown yeah and these cows on the back are mostly black ones so leftover grays here on my palette and leaving the very top edge of these cows bodies with a white stripe uh, to give volume with a nice highlight on top of most of these cows' bodies and some final grayish shade behind the fences. Okay, so now uh, I am actually using black for the bottom part of these cows' bodies to create uh, an even more three-dimensional effect for their bodies. Okay, so now this is the final polishing stage of my on-location painting. I just add another quick layer of red-brown for the rooftop just to give it more weight with another layer of uh, more solid wash and volume for this pile of hay or grains. And now just grabbing some leftover dark shade of green to paint the shadow underneath these two cows' bodies here in the middle ground. 
And that's very much it for this on location drawing and painting. Thank you so much for watching this video everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I try to update my channel with two to three new videos every week and here's a look of my finished sketch. And now it's time to go home back on this bridge again. Yeah, so I will definitely come back again uh, later in the spring and summer to sketch more farm sceneries. And I will need to make a reservation next time to go to that migratory bird sanctuary. Bye everyone, see you next time!